This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Gamefly. Coming up on Destructoid... Skyrim! That. Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I am Dova King. And the day I'm, has I'm finally Max arrived. Scoba. Your Max Scoville. It's here. He's not Dova King, you guys. That was a joke. He hit it. Y'all almost fell for it. <laughs> anyway, it's here. Uh, it Holy was shit. It was December 13th of last year that we first talked about the Elder Scrolls on this show. I wasn't even here. It was Jonathan Holmes and you talking about yeah. it. But that was when they first announced it at the VGAs. Yeah. One day away. It's one day away. It's been a long time away. coming. I'm prepared. I've got mead in my stein right now. Um, that's actually water. I'm, I'm lying. Yeah. I'm, I'm not wasted right now, as my demeanor may imply. But I'm sure that some of you have either pre-ordered the game or are planning on picking it up, regardless of whatever reviews you happen to read. But I'm here to tell you definitively that you have made a wise choice in your purchase. In addition to being a step up from Oblivion in pretty much every way possible, Skyrim is simply one of, if not the best RPGs I've ever played. Bethesda's managed to take pretty much the best aspects of both the Fallout series and the Elder Scrolls games and then combine them into something that stays true to the Elder Scrolls franchise, strips out all the fluff and convolutedness from Oblivion, and then streamlines everything while still allow allowing for a very customizable experience. Now, since Max and I only had one review copy of the game, that's how these things work, unfortunately, we split up our time with it. So you roamed around and did a whole bunch of the side quests and kind of just explored the general area while I concentrated on the main storyline. So without spoiling too much of that for you, most of your time on the main storyline is spent trying to figure out who or what or whatever it is brought the dragons back from extinction. It was Makarov. <laughs> Not Spoiler really. alert. This will, of course, involve traveling to far off lands and traversing quite a few dungeons, and most importantly, some good old fashioned dragon killing. Yeah. Now, obviously, dragons are one of the big selling points for the game, and I know people are stoked on them, and I don't think anyone's going to be disappointed. Now, a lot of the dragon counters are tied with the main storyline, but there are all still plenty of randomly generated ones, which will just suddenly appear. Um, at one Scare point, I was, I, yeah, I, was, I was just kind of, you know, on my way to fight one dragon, and then on my way there, I got attacked by a different dragon. Uh, at another point, I found a dragon that was just asleep in a crater, and he didn't like that, so he chased after me. Um, as for actually fighting the dragons, they manage to be epic and challenging battles without being imbalanced. And depending on what level you are and what dragon you're fighting, it'll, it'll feel somewhere between a mini boss and a regular boss battle. Mm. Um, and despite what my experience would have you believe, running away on horseback like a frightened sissy will not make the dragons no, go away. They will no. continue chasing you, and other things yeah. will attack you, and then those things will attack the dragons. It's all very exciting. Yes. Fortunately, kind of though, that fluid. is where your skills come in, because in addition to your natural dragonborn abilities, which you learn to harness over the course of the main quest, you also find yourself just traveling around the land of Skyrim, talking to NPCs. They can train you in combat, magic, pretty much any hobby that you would like. Now, as for characters, I played as a Khajiit, which yeah. is the stealthy feline race. They do the a lot of thievery and, and lock picking. And I specialized in just about everything that the game would let me, particularly two-handed combat. But as for hobbies, I actually really enjoyed alchemy and cooking. What was your character Alchemy like? and cooking is for ladies. I uh, knew my, you were going to make a lady My character joke. was an Argonian named Danzig who was really burly. I made him as, as heavy as he could for mm -hmm. a lizard man. Um, and I, I focus mostly on combat. You don't really pick a class in Skyrim. You just kind of start doing stuff. And your experience um, in various skills is based on how often you use those skills. So, for example, your armor skills will increase when you take hits. So if you're wearing light armor, your light armor will increase and vice versa if you have heavy armor on. Um, even if you fail a lockpicking attempt, you'll still gain some experience for it. Uh, it's, it's very, very dynamic how it works. Um, because I was focusing on combat, most of the perks I was able to unlock were one and two-handed attacks, destruction, spells, and heavy armor. Right. As far as actual combat goes, melee seems a lot less clunky than it was in Oblivion. I guess that's the way I should describe it. Even though my specialty was two-handed weapons, I did actually find myself having to learn magic eventually, just because all you get for ranged combat is basically a bow and arrow, which is kind of shitty for ranged combat down the line. So To be fair, it still looks really cool. The well, physics yeah. of the bow are great. Yeah. It's just but Magicka does use. help, um, especially for the dragons. And also, regenerative health is a huge thing. It's, it's so helpful in this game, I can't even say. A lot, of, a lot of the familiar magic spells reappear this time around. You've got Conjuration, Destruction, Illusion, and Restoration, all of which were in Oblivion, along with a couple new ones, like you have your Shouts, which are basically just your dragonborn abilities. 
All of the perks are neatly nestled away in a brand new menu system that is totally streamlined and makes the one from Oblivion look like a crappy children's drawing. Um, the Constellation skill tree is absolutely gorgeous. I know we've already seen this information. They showed it off a few months back, but mm -hmm. bears repeating, it looks beautiful. It has 18 different branches for each of your major attributes, ranging from pretty standard stuff like Arcane Blacksmith, which lets you improve magical weapons and armor, which you can't do otherwise, to pickpocketing skills that let you quietly harm your enemies by placing poison into their pockets. Ooh. Titillating, isn't it? So in addition to picking a perk, when you level up, you also get the option to add 10 points to one of your three main attributes, health, stamina, or magicka. So of course a big upgrade in this game is that you can now dual wield anything, including spells. So for instance, you can cast a destruction spell on somebody while healing yourself at the same time, although it will use up you know, twice the magicka, but that's the, that's the trade off. Unlike in Oblivion, where you had to sleep in order to level up, also Skyrim lets you do it like pretty much whenever you want. It's, it's fast and it's simple. It makes simple. a noise like every time you do yeah. it and it's really satisfying. Um, if you are impatient about leveling up different skills, there are NPCs throughout the game who will train you in certain abilities for a price. Oh. Uh, for example, a particular member of the Companions, which are the um, equivalent of the Fighters Guild from Oblivion, uh, they will teach you, you know, one of them will teach you two-handed attacks, while, you know, a Kahit Traveler will improve you for s sneaking. Them, oh, you know. we are good at that. They'll charge mm -hmm. you like 200 bucks and they'll be like, I'll teach you how to steal stuff. So. so I was actually really impressed with the hobbies and crafting system. They got rid of like the worst stuff from Oblivion, like that awful lock picking mechanism, and they replaced that with basically the one from Fallout, but slightly more difficult. Um, they also got rid of the Persuade minigame. It's now been replaced with a dialogue option that lets you persuade people based on your speech craft. But it doesn't always work, and unlike in Fallout, it won't tell you if you have enough skill points to successfully persuade someone. You just kind of have to guess, so it's kind of weird. But if persuasion doesn't work, you can always bribe or intimidate someone, but neither of those options is necessarily guaranteed to work either, so kind of a crapshoot. Now, as far as weapon and armor crafting, it's pretty straightforward. Every town has a forge and a tanning rack that you can use to smelt stuff or turn the adorable little elks you find in the wild into fine leather goods. Uh, there's no weapon or armor degradation, but there are grindstones and workbenches in the towns that let you sharpen your items for increased damage, which is always cool. Oddly enough, I found collecting items in the game to be really addictive because they have these farms scattered out throughout Skyrim now where people are growing cabbage and potatoes and shit and you can just you can just steal the cabbage if you want, but it's not technically stealing like you can farm just bill. take it. <clears throat> farm bill. And you can cook stuff with it. It's not farm bill. <laughs> Cooking mama. It kind of is like that actually now that I think about it. But you can harvest them. Or if you're like low on cash, you can harvest them and then sell them back to the person who originally planted them for money, which is kind of you interesting. You can be a migrant worker, there you go. Yes, there you go. Um, there's also alchemy, which works similarly to that in Oblivion. You find ingredients out in the wild, then you consume them to discover their effects, and then you combine ingredients with like effects to make potions. Enchanting is pretty much the same also as in Oblivion. Last but not least, hunting is kind of a cool thing. I killed and harvested quite a few animals what in kind my of Skyrim animals? time. I'm not gonna list them all, but here is a list on the screen right now. Just just going down there, like even like butterflies and shit. I killed more animals than you did, honestly. Really? Well this is just I killed, a small I was like it's I was like everything. the Ted Nugent of Skyrim, really. Yeah. Now it's really not any kind of surprise that this game is amazing looking, but it bears repeating repeatedly. Every single aspect of this game is pretty. We know that the graphics are incredible, but just from a design standpoint, this is one of the most aesthetically pleasing video games I've ever played. You, you pop the game in and you see Bethesda's logo, and then you see the Skyrim menu screen, and that's that's it. There are no middleware logos or extra crap on the screen. Um, in the game, the HUD is just as clean and minimalistic as possible. Uh, no unnecessary information displayed. You've got your health, your magicka, your stamina, and your compass. Uh, as Tara mentioned, the menu system is light years beyond Oblivion, but even the Pip-Boy 3000 from Fallout seems like a counterintuitive pile of shit by comparison. Um, obviously, people aren't buying this game because they want to look at trees and flowers, but you know, you want to set bandits on fire and stab dragons in the ass. I will say that this game has some of the most beautiful and realistic portrayals of nature I've seen in any video game. Like, just walking around, yeah. it's, it's, it's enjoyable. Like, you're yeah. just walking around. At several points during my time, I had to stop and just stare at my TV. Um, you know, I'd look up and I'd see the full moon or the fucking aurora borealis or like a robin's egg blue sky with fluffy clouds in it. Or, you know, you'd look down and you'd see autumn leaves or snow falling on rocks and it's, 
it's like legitimately beautiful. Yeah. Of course, all the serene and pretty nature is merely supplemental to setting bandits on fire and stabbing dragons in the ass. Um, but the amount of time that Bethesda's artists put into every little aspect of the game is probably the reason mm -hmm. it's so good. Yeah. Um, every single object you pick up can be examined closely from the inventory menu, and even the loading screens give you 3D models of stuff to look at while you're waiting for the next area. Uh, the only downside of the visuals I can think of is that some of the textures look a little bit low res close up, and this is of course playing on Xbox. Right. And before you say anything, the 360 version is the only review copy we got, um, but rest assured this game will look even better on PC, and if it doesn't, I'm sure someone will mod it within a month. Um, yeah. Now, I usually hesitate to label video games as art because they come in so many different forms and Angry Birds is stupid, but in the case of Skyrim, I don't want to slap the art label on it because I honestly think the game pushes the boundaries of what art is. Um, the world of Skyrim is a virtual world. It's a place you can legitimately get lost in. Um, it should not only be applauded, it should be feared because turning off Skyrim and going outside to ride the bus to work is like a dismal experience. Um, the game is some great A escapism. Oh yeah. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, We've got more thoughts about the game, but first let's take a word from our sponsor. Obviously you guys are fine connoisseurs of video gaming, and if you haven't checked out Gamefly, you're doing yourself a great disservice. Gamefly is the largest video game rental service on the internet and offers you a choice from over 7,000 new and classic titles across a wide variety of consoles and handhelds. Membership plans start at just $15.95 a month and Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time. You can keep the games as long as you like and there are no due dates or late fees, and shipping is always free. Once you're done with the game, just mail it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. If you fall madly in love with a particular game, you can head over to the Gamefly website, click on Keep It, and the game is yours for a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Now, because you watch our incredible video game news program, you can head over to Gamefly.com slash Destructoid and get a 15-day free trial. Gamefly offers an amazing, amazing service, and signing up through this URL helps support our show, so go check it out. Wonderful. Back to the Skyrim. So we compiled a little list of things we thought we should note. You know, obviously it's such a big game, we can't talk yeah. about everything, but there are things I think that deserve a little bit of emphasis. Um, for instance, some good things. You can sprint in the game now. That is awesome. Even Running. on a horse, you can sprint. Mm -hmm. um, the dungeons are actually pretty varied inside. I have yeah. found myself not really noticing a whole lot of repeated patterns at all in if the game. If you play enough of them, you will start to see a pattern, but really, it doesn't matter because yeah. they still look really it's, good. It's barely noticeable. There are, there are some puzzles thrown in there that make yeah. it make it interesting. Um, Keep you interested. Yeah. There, are, um, there are books with hints and perk points, which yeah. are, there's, you know, that's not new, but still, it's a lot of books. Someone had to write that shit, and yeah. it's still something you can look for and play with. The music is absolutely amazing. I, I actually played this game so much this weekend that I was just hearing the ambient sounds of Skyrim in my head yeah. as I was trying to fall asleep, and it was oddly soothing. Yeah. And then I, I started hearing the like Dovakin, Dovakin. I'm gonna and buy that the soundtrack. Like I'm not. I yeah. want that to go with me. I've, I've had to settle for Howard Shore's Lord of the Rings score, but that's not cutting it. Um, um, the menu is is really good. Like we said, one thing I thought was really cool is it tells you which weapons and armor and spells are the most effective. Um, at the bottom, there's a little red or green number. Um, you know, for for stuff that's more powerful, it'll say like you know a plus, and it'll be in green. Mm -hmm. um, this is handy. Instead of like scrolling back and forth between two weapons trying to figure out which one is more effective, it just tells you. So there's that. Um, you can also favorite stuff um, in the in the inventory menu, whether it's a spell or an item mm -hmm. or a potion or a weapon or whatever. Um, you just press Y, and then when you're in combat, you press up on the d-pad and you'll have a list like a short list yeah. of um and you're in the midst one of one thing i thought we should mention is the voice acting because it's here's the thing usually in a game i notice bad voice acting and if i don't notice the voice acting all i assume it's really good because it's not ridiculously yeah. silly yeah. No, but they, well they, done they nailed it yeah I mean, even without patrick stewart it's it's still pretty brilliant well they got max von Sydow, so yeah. you know no big deal um so let's talk about um, our frustrations with yeah. the game a little few, bit because few, there, there were there were a few of them. There are a few. They're pretty nitpicky, but you know, um, we'll let you know. I experience quite a few long loading times. I don't know if this is just because I was on my Xbox for eight hours a day playing it, but that was kind of annoying after a while. Um, dragons can be incredibly difficult to beat depending on where you encounter one and what level you're at. Yeah. It seems a little unfair sometimes because sometimes you have people fighting it with you and other times you're just alone. That brings me to my point. I think one of my biggest pet peeves was if you're if you're fighting with an NPC companion and you hit them by accident. If you're in the middle of fighting a dragon with like 17 city guards and you have a fire spell on and you happen to hit one of them with your fire spell, all of a sudden they're mm -hmm. all fighting you in addition to the dragon, which is really annoying and yeah. considering how the combat is like real time, not turn based, and there's a lot of shit going on. 
Um, I was hoping that maybe the NPCs would be a little bit more forgiving in terms of not yeah. immediately attacking me. Yeah, that so. happened to me quite a few times. And also, I'm sure people are really wondering about bugs and stuff since it is, it is yeah. a Bethesda game. I actually experienced almost none. Yeah, I very glitched minimal. out once when I tried to enter an area on horseback and it like brought me into some weird dimension where I was just floating in space. Okay. But I just restarted it and then a couple times like maybe 20 hours into the game or something, um, the menu system froze. And I think it happened when I pressed a button like rapidly twice. Yeah. So just don't do that. Well, and you'll be fine, I'm sure. When I previewed the game last month, uh, I ran into a lot of bugs like falling into the ground and they fixed that. We were like yeah. running around the edges of mountains and stuff, places yeah. where you're not really supposed to go walking and I found pretty much no bugs. Yeah. I think I was... at one point there was a character who I couldn't interact with who was like sort of just standing there walking into a wall repeatedly. Mm -hmm. but. Considering this is an like an epic, massive yeah. Bethesda game, and they're known for shipping kind of buggy stuff, this is uh, kind of an achievement for Impressive, them. Impressive, yeah. Um, so, anything else? Um, I, well, why don't we take some questions Let's actually? Some questions. Because there's a ton of content in the game. Yesterday we asked you guys what you wanted to know in the Skyrim view. Obviously, we can't get to it all, but let's uh, let's ask a few questions. Yeah. Mr. Shucks on uh, Twitter, I guess, asked, "How long will I have to play to complete a hundred percent of the Eternity. game?" Eternity. So All according to Todd Howard, you can actually play the game forever. There are apparently just infinitely generated quests. Um, but again, it's really not the kind of game where you can try and get a percentage in. You just play it because you enjoy it. Yeah. So. Um, um, but yeah. Charge uh, 6 on Twitter asked, how about a breakdown of a few quests or some interesting places slash towns to visit? Um, I'll take this one. I thought Markarth was pretty badass. It is the city farthest west on the map, and it's kind of like Helm's Deep from the Two Towers, except there's a lot of really weird, fucked up shit going on. Uh, while I was there, I followed a series of side quests that led me to joining a coven full of people who eat other people. And I'm actually not sure if this made me a true vampire or not, but in any case, I did get a special ring that made my health and stamina Ooh. regenerate more quickly. And also, I could eat people after I killed them, which was sort of cool. And I mean, I, it didn't affect me in daylight, except at one point a guard said, what have you been eating? Your breath is terrible. Do you something. get help from eating the other people? Yeah, a little bit. Nice. Um, also in Markarth, I picked up a side quest that had me exploring a haunted house at first, and it ended with me doing the bidding of Molag Ball, the Daedric God of Submission and Domination. Mm. You guys might know him from previous Elder Scrolls game, but that part is fucking badass. I have won this contest before. Ah, uh, but I have my own champion this time, Logroth. Kill him. All right, well, next question comes from Aaron Brun on Facebook. Is there any companion system where you can have people follow and help out, whether they are hired or if they just ask to join you? Um, I was actually surprised at how early on in the game you can get NPC yeah. companions. Um, in uh, in Riverwood, like the first town you go to, um, I helped cockblock the town's minstrel because this um, archer guy wanted me to, so he could win over this one chick. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he was like, "I could teach you the ways of archery, or if you're doing anything later, I could tag along." So he came with me to a yeah. cave and shot spiders with his arrows for me. I refused that guy as a follower, actually, but within like maybe the He's first nice. three hours you of the game, I got another follower named Lydia, who was yeah. actually quite helpful. The so. amount of NPC companions you can have, they kind of they show up a lot. Yeah. Um, you can also get a dog if you want. You can have a dog that follows you around. Uh, at one point, I came across a stray dog, and I just interacted with it, and then it became my pet. It followed Aww. me. It thought it was it, his mother or something. Um, El Dotor, Dotorado Davieri uh, said, can I have sex with a wolf? Uh, you can try, but the wolf will probably bite the shit out of you. Um, actually, wolves are the most common enemy I came across, so, hey man, if, if, you know, there's plenty of wolves in Skyrim, if one wolf rejects you, you can try and have sex with a different one. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of wolves, I know you guys are dying to know about werewolves. Um, it's a funny story. After I previewed the game last month, I got an email from Bethesda about what information was, you know, top secret, off limits, embargoed, and they literally said to me, please do not allude to or talk about werewolves. I'm always talking about it's werewolves. True. That's not fair. I did a YouTube playlist about werewolves, and they're like, don't talk about werewolves. So I'm like, what do I do? It's all he um, knows. Yeah, but that being said, um, even though I knew that they were in the game, which they are, uh, the reveal is really just totally magnificent. And when I got to it, I sat up in my chair and went, ah, holy shit! And yeah, so they're in the game. Um, I'm not gonna spoil the surprise, just, just play it. I had it, a lot or... of moments like that while playing, actually. It's... Like, this game is fucking awesome. It's like, I found myself just saying that to myself a lot, yeah. so, yeah. 
Um, Kem Karate asks, can I get into a gay marriage with a giant? Oh, oh. Is Kem I mean, Karate I'm, a man? Maybe. I, Is he you know, proposing? Maybe. Um, but no, I, the giants in the game are, um, they're, uh, they're, they're pretty much. Yeah, you're going to want to avoid them. Yeah, they're usually. very confrontational. If you go and bother their mammoths, they'll just go, and then they'll sort of like, Charge One hit at you. and you're dead from a and giant. They'll, they'll give you a warning, but then they will eventually kill you because they're giants. Yeah. Um, I'm sure someone will mod in the gay giant marriage mod or something. <laughs> um, finally, Carbonated92 asks, will I commit suicide because I can't live in the world of Skyrim? Please don't. Just be happy you live in a world where Skyrim exists because honestly, it's a really, really cool game. Um, it's beautiful, it's huge, it's fun, it's completely immersive. Uh, personally, I had really high expectations for this game, and they were pretty much blown away. Um, Skyrim is the kind of game that makes me proud to be involved in the video game industry, and I think it's a milestone for the medium. It's the kind of thing I want to show to my mom and say, You see this? It's not just guns and explosions and plumbers eating mushrooms. This is something else. Although there are mushrooms. You can also, yeah, you can. You can eat mushrooms. That's true. You could be a guy in overalls who eats mushrooms. But the point <laughs> is, um, if Skyrim doesn't impress you on some level, I really don't know what will. Yeah, I honestly, I, I can't argue with you at all. I, I struggle to find things that were wrong with this game, and I just, so few things. My enthusiasm, it kind of went from cautiously optimistic in the beginning to, to intrigued, to just downright enamored by the sheer level of detail within the game. It, it's not like anything I've ever seen before, and I honestly think that this will go down as one of the best games of our generation. Well, in any case, I'm sure the hardcore fans will be playing it for the next seven yeah, years. So, so hopefully uh, people will still watch our show, yeah. even though, you know. We're about to lose like half our viewers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's our, that's our Skyrim review. Yeah. Um, we're here. We did this. I hope this. you guys enjoyed uh, it. I'm sure you guys have a ton more questions because uh, there's a lot to talk about and it's impossible to talk about everything in this game. Um, but there's one last thing we're going to do. Uh, you guys can post questions here, send us video responses, or ask us on our Facebook at facebook.com slash show or on Twitter at twitter.com slash show. And we're going to be uploading some more videos later today to answer those questions as much as we can. Um, but, I mean, what were you going to do the day before Skyrim comes out anyway? Like, what, what are you going to do? You're go just going to sit there. Stock them on your food thumbs. and lube. Um, but, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Thanks for sticking with us through all our Sky Skyrim coverage. And uh, please stick around, even after Skyrim comes out. We'll see please, you guys around. Please still watch us. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.